Hello and welcome to part one in our three-part series on creating a project in Cap Server 5. Now you notice that we're starting this with the server open and we have connected the configuration to the runtime. If you've looked at features you know that the new Cap Server 5 we have separated the runtime and the configuration utility which will eventually allow you to edit projects that are running live on another machine with a single configuration utility. So when the server opens after the first install, it's going to load the default project, which is the sim demo project. Now we want to create a new project. So we're going to click on the create new project icon or button and that is right here. And the first thing that the server does is asked if we wish to update the current online project or edit a new project or edit an existing project offline and we want to create a new project so we're going to click yes update and now we have the new project loaded so now we're going to create a channel and a channel is a representation of the communications media so for a serial driver that would be a serial port for an Ethernet driver, that would be a TCP IP socket that's created and used as a source for sending TCP IP messages out to a remote device. So we're going to click to add a new channel. We can either click the prompt, we can click Edit, Devices, New Channel, or we can click on the button for New Channel. So I'm going to just click the button. And that opens the New Channel Wizard. The first page in the wizard is channel name. Now I'm going to accept the default channel name of channel 1 and that's as we add channels every channel is enumerated so if I created five channels and just accepted the defaults there would be channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, channel 5. Now you're going to want to name this channel something that reminds you every time you look at it of what it's doing so if this is an Ethernet connection to a certain device, you might s somehow indicate that. Um, I'm going to leave the default, as I said, at channel 1. Uh, the other thing is, channel names can be up to 256 characters long. You're going to want to be aware of that, though, because you may have to type this name a lot in a client, or you may have a limit of the length of an OPC item or DDE item in a client and you don't want to have a channel name and a device name that are so long that you can't fit everything into the address space in a client application. So I'm going to click next to accept the default name and now we've got the device driver. Now on this page we select the driver that's going to be used by the channel. Remember the channel represents the media for the connection to the device. Now we have to choose the language that it's going to be using. So I'm going to open the drop down and you'll see that I have a lot of drivers. That's because I've installed everything that the server has to install. I'm going to select the Modbus TCP IP Ethernet driver. Now you may have a few less drivers if you haven't installed everything. So don't, don't think that something's wrong if you don't have all the drivers that are in this example. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable channel diagnostics. Now I do this so that I can diagnose any communications problems. The way the diagnostics works, and we'll go over this in detail in some other lesson, but the way the diagnostics works is it captures the communications between the channel and the device or devices. And it does that outside of the server. It does that at the COM library for serial drivers or at the socket manager for Ethernet drivers. So now that I've selected my properties, I'm going to click Next. And this is a specific page network interface for Ethernet drivers or serial drivers that have Ethernet encapsulation enabled. And what it allows us to do is select the Ethernet port, card, or IP address that we wish to use to talk to devices. Why would you do this? Well, in modern processors, you can have more than one Ethernet card installed, or you can have more than one IP address assigned to a specific network card and you may want to be going through a VLAN to a device or you have two cards so that you can talk to administration on one and the plant floor on another so this allows us to select that you are going to want to specify or know 
where your hardware is connected so that you can select that properly. If you use default, it just chooses the first network card in the bind order. If I drop that list down, you'll see that I only have one IP address and I only have one card. So using default or selecting the card is the same in my case. So we're going to leave it at default and click next. Write optimizations, we'll go over this later as well in detail in another lesson. Um, write optimization methods are there so that we can keep malformed clients from overloading the processing of the server with the device. So if we did too many writes, we wouldn't get any reads in, and therefore you would get very slow updates into your device. So I'm going to leave the defaults and I'm going to click Next. This last wizard page is a custom page specific to the Modbus Ethernet driver, and it allows us to define socket usage. We'll go over this more in a Modbus lesson. For now, I'm going to leave it at the default and click Next. The last page is a summary page. It allows us to look at what we've done in defining the channel. We can go back and change any of the settings at this time, or we can finish and edit the settings in the properties, the channel properties uh, dialog. One thing that you need to know is that you cannot change the device driver once you've assigned it to a channel. So once you click finish, if you need to change the device driver, you're going to have to create a new channel. So I'm going to click finish. And we are now done creating a channel in our new server project. Thank you for viewing part one in our three-part series. Be sure to continue on with part two so that you can learn how to create a device.